All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wild Kid of Boils, episode number 41. Um, it is Wednesday today, so it's hump day. Um, hopefully, you've had an amazing week so far. I just feel like this week has gone so fast. I can't believe it's Wednesday already. Um, I've done my meditation this morning. Um, I've set up a meditation challenge um, with my coaching group to hold me accountable. So, um, we're all committing to meditating every single day for November. Um, if you want to jump in and, and join in on the fun, then obviously you do feel free. Um, so I was actually struggling to think about what I should talk about today. Um, so I went back to the video I did last week where I was asking you guys to ask me a question. And I just read through some of the comments there. And um, somebody had asked me, about the whole owl versus lax thing. So if you if you haven't already watched the video I did a while ago now, which was probably like in the first seven to fourteen episodes of Wild the Kettle Boils, um and these are all on YouTube by the way. So if you want to catch up on YouTube, you can watch them all in a row. Or we'll just put them on <laughs> so you just watch one after the other while you're doing something like washing the dishes or laundry or something boring like that. Um but anyway, so somebody had asked about the whole owls versus larks thing where I was talking about um this idea of I'm a lark, which means that I I'm an early bird, I really struggle staying up late, like nine o'clock is my bedtime. Sometimes I can go to sleep at eight o'clock even if I'm really tired and sometimes I can go to sleep, you know, a little bit later, I might go to bed at 10 o'clock. Um, but when it starts to get half past 10, 11, 12, um, I can get really agitated, um, get really tired and also then I don't sleep so well. So if I go to bed later, don't really sleep later. Um, I'll still wake up at the same time, but usually feel a lot more tired as a result. So um, we, I had this conversation in one of the previous videos about, you know, if you're an owl, you like to go to bed late, you like to sleep in late, um, and that's your natural tendency. And if you're a lark, then you should, um, well, you should, but then you like to, you know, go to bed early and wake up early, and that's what that what's that's what feels good for you. So someone had asked me. They said, "Oh, they identify themselves as an owl, but how do they change from being an owl to a morning person?" And um, to give you a little bit of a background, where all of this stuff comes from is probably two years ago now. Um, I did my diploma in um, psychoneuroimmunology, PNI, and they call it PNI because psychoneuroimmunology just makes people's eyes glaze over and their brains shut off, and then they don't, then they stop listening to me. So, um, one of the things we learned in PNI was this idea of flexibility as a sign of health. So um, I just realized I'm standing over the kitchen sink. I don't know why I'm doing that. Maybe I should go sit down somewhere. Um, so we, um, yeah, we have this idea of flexibility as a sign of health. And um, we have three main systems which, I guess, govern us, so to speak. We've got our um, immune system, we've got our metabolic system, and then we've got our, our brain, or I guess our, our psychological system or our cognitive system. And health is being able to be flexible within these systems. So, um, you know, if your immune system needs to fight off something, it's able to kick into gear and maybe prioritize energy over the cognitive system or the metabolic system. If you have to run a marathon, you know, you want to have your metabolic system ruling the show because you don't, you know, want to have your immune system active at the same time that you're running a marathon. Um, and if you're doing a cognitive task, for example, you know, problem solving, um, you know, thinking, studying, that type of thing, you, you want to have a lot of energy going to your cognitive system. Um, and I think one of the statistics I've shared with you guys um, before on this page in written format was probably something like um, professional chess players burn 6,000 calories a day because of the cognitive um, demand, um, a cognitive energetic demand to play chess to that level because of the brain power it involves. So, um, you know, when we have flexibility with all these different systems, we're in, we're in health. Now, health or poor health, should I say, is often a breakdown of the flexibility in these systems. So, 
um, type 2 diabetes, a heart disease, um, insulin resistance, that's all a loss of flexibility of the metabolic system. Um, we, we lose the ability to be flexible to burn fat. And um, we are inflexibly relying on sugar, which means we burn through our sugar stores, we get low blood sugar, we feel hungry, we get hangry, we feel shaky in between meals, we struggle to exercise if we haven't eaten anything. Um, and that's an indicator of um, you know, poor metabolic flexibility because we're not flexible to tap into burning fat. Um, and then if we also think about something like an autoimmune condition, autoimmune condition is inflexibility of the immune system. It's just dominating. The immune system is on, 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 on. It can't switch off. Um, and that might be at the compromise of the cognitive system. You know, very often autoimmune people have um, foggy brain or um, struggle with weight loss and um, things like that. So when the immune system is active um, or hyperactive, should we say, in the case of autoimmunity, um, then we struggle with metabolic flexibility. So health is being flexible. You know, if you can get up in the morning and do a workout without eating anything and not feel faint or low in sugar, that's a, that's a really good sign of metabolic flexibility. Um, and if your psychological system, if your cognitive system is adaptable to things, so you don't get really stressed when your plans change at the last minute, or you don't get really stressed, um, you know, when somebody has a different point of view to you. So that demonstrates cognitive or psychological flexibility, um, and which is why the mindset work I do in my program is so important, or the mindset work I talk about in these videos is so important. So we have these three energy systems, and sometimes people are like, oh, well, how do I make my immune system healthier? Or how do I become more um, uh, understanding of other people, more psychologically flexible? And so flexibility in one system, and I'm going to bring this back to owls and larks, don't worry. Um, so flexibility in one system creates flexibility in another system. So, for example, people with autoimmune conditions, if they learn, you know, if they engage in fitness, if they become strong, if, if you know, if they do things like fasting or they do things which enable them to tap into their fat burning stores the the status of that condition can improve. Um, likewise, um, you know, if someone's metabolically inflexible and um, we work on their mental resilience, metabolic flexibility improves. So um, flexibility in one system supports flexibility in other systems, and then um, and then we have a healthier body. But this is all about this idea that flexibility is a um, is a, is a measure of health. But when it comes to your sleep, we don't want to be too flexible. And that is the exception to the rule. Whereas because our sleep patterns inform our circadian rhythms. So when we're asleep at night, we're releasing melatonin. When we're up, you know, first thing in the morning, we're releasing cortisol, which is the body's stress hormone. Now cortisol peaks um, an hour after waking. So, um, like my cortisol level would be peaking about now, <laughs> which is why I'm doing this video for you. So, um, you know, with somebody who is an owl, their cortisol level is going to peak later in the day. So forcing yourself into a different rhythm can create a breakdown in health because it then affects this release of these different hormones. And we need cortisol is anti-inflammatory um, as is melatonin is also anti-inflammatory, but they each serve their purpose within us and um, they are signalers to the immune system. So if you've ever, I don't know if you've ever noticed, like if you've had a cold, very often you feel like more like gross when you wake up in the morning or, you know, as the evening starts to draw in and you're getting ready to go to bed at night, you start to get a worsening of your symptoms. But during the daytime, you, you know, you feel okay. Um, and this is essentially because this, the symptoms we get when we have a flu or when we have cold are not the flu, it's the immune system creating those symptoms. So symptoms like foggy brain, you know, when your, your muscles ache and um, you feel really tired and you feel very low in your mood and your appetite changes, those are all symptoms that come from the immune system. 
And so those symptoms are worse during, in, um, you know, in the morning and in the evening because that's when cortisol is still low. So the immune system tends to be more active at night and, um, and this is controlled with our melatonin and cortisol hormones. So when cortisol is up during the day, it's you know, keeping the immune system at bay because we need more energy going to the metabolic system and the cognitive system so that we can do our day. Um, but then at night time, when we're resting and we're recovering, then, um, then we want the immune system to be active because then we don't need the energy in the metabolic system. We're asleep. So then the energy can go to the immune system. It can do a little cleanup in our body at night and then prepare us for the next morning. So... That's the reason why knowing if you're an owl and a lark is so important and then playing to it because we don't want to force ourselves um, into an artificial rhythm because that potentially may have an impact on our cortisol melatonin cycle which then has an impact on our um, metabolic and immune system. So you know even though the question was how do i become a lark well if you really really wanted to become a lark then maybe go to bed earlier. But, you know, I know, especially talking to Shay, who, um, who does the yoga retreats with me, she always says, like, it, you know, she sometimes she'll just get into bed because she's an owl. And then she's just like looking at the ceiling, twiddling her thumbs, having a little daydream about things. Um, so if that's you, don't force it. I think it's really just about playing to your strengths. Know which one you are. And, and honor it and um, create your life around it. But, I mean, that's, that's essentially what I've had to do. Good morning, April. Um, nice to see you. Um, so, yeah, just, um, you know, modern day life probably doesn't cater for extremes. So if you are an extreme lark or an extreme owl, it's, um, it's a bit more difficult. But funny story is um, I was at this event on London this weekend and in London this weekend and um, I was meeting my one of my best friends for dinner um, after the event on the Saturday night and we were meeting at six o'clock and I was just saying we were both saying to each other that um, you know, she was really tired and she'd actually been out the night before and um, she'd had a very busy week at work and she was actually saying like she was so relieved that she was seeing me for dinner and it wasn't anybody else because she knew we would meet really early and we'd be finished really early and we could all go to bed really early. So I think we, we met at 6.30 and we ate and then we left the restaurant at about 8.30 and then home in bed by 9. Perfect. Absolutely perfect in my books. Um, so yeah, design, design your life around it um, as opposed to trying to be something you're not. Play to your strengths. Um, you know, one of the things I've learned recently is this idea of um, going with your flow to create the most energy. You know, if you're continuously trying to put, you know, a square peg in a round hole, um, it's going to be very energetically expensive for you, which is going to leave you tired and drained. So it's better to know who you are so you can play to that um, so that you can just have great flow and great energy in whatever you're trying to do every day. So that's it for today everyone thank you so much for joining me this morning i wish you an amazing wednesday um you know as usual if there's anything you want me to talk about or any questions from this video just pop them in the comments box i'm sort of like scratching my head every morning trying to think of some stuff now you know we're like 40 videos in <laughs> i don't know how long i can keep on going with this for so um any help much appreciated have a lovely day bye